Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here. I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee. Get the fake sip investigator in here to make sure that was not a fake sip, it was real. And I thought I would go ahead and do this video again. Not necessarily the same video, but make these points clear because people still don't get it. When we're talking about things like kicking power or just general explosiveness in contact sports, and strength and power training. All right, everybody step back who's being critical and freaking out and pretend it's not Jason Blaha telling you this. Pretend it's some other person who coaches people and who lifts, right? Pretend it's some other person who coaches whose name isn't Jason Blaha who you hate and, and have a bias against, okay? Stop and pretend it's someone else saying that. Strength and power affect force production, all right? And no one is over here saying that just because someone is strong that they could take down a highly skilled martial arts practitioner. Okay? No one is saying that. Not me, hopefully not, not anyone else. That's a straw man argument. I have been saying that strength and power and speed, when two people are untrained or minimal training, gives an advantage. In other words, if you don't have a serious fighting background and you squat 150 pounds and have a bad knee that dislocates when you get close to 200, and someone who squats over 500 pounds and you decide to duke it out, you're probably going to be in trouble, okay? Right? Because you're weak and injured, and that person is strong. It does matter, especially when they don't have skill, okay? Hopefully people understand that. And by that same token, if you have two highly skilled practitioners, let's say you have two guys who both have 10 years of serious Muay Thai training, right? Let's just pick that one because I know some guys who do it. I know some guys who coach it. I've got a friend who instructs it and competes. Okay, Muay Thai. 10 years of it. Really hard training. One of them, when you go put him on a box, he can box squat 150 and the other one squats 500. The guy who is stronger does have an advantage, okay, right? But it seems like people are arguing that this doesn't matter at all, that, oh, it doesn't matter. Well, no, guys, you can only produce as much force no matter how good your or bad your technique is, right? Someone who has so horrifically bad technique that they just throw a clumsy kick and potato flop their way through it versus someone who has thrown tens of thousands of perfect kicks and mastered his technique over and over and over and over for years. Okay, you can still only produce as much force as your muscles and nervous system allow you to. You have physical structures that will determine how much force you can apply with your phenomenally bad or phenomenally good technique. And these people seem to have this weird idea that they think that someone who's really strong that if they kick something as hard as they can, that it's not going to produce any force. That's delusional, okay? Um, hopefully, people are understanding what I am saying. Let's say that you have never thrown in a kick in your entire life. This should, hopefully, this is common sense. You have someone who doesn't train, doesn't lift, has no strength, and they run up and they kick a plate that measures their force, and they flop at it like a big old potato, like you guys visualize maybe me kicking, um, right? And they hit it. It's going to produce a certain amount of force. You take someone who's over 200 pounds, who squats 550 or 600 pounds, and they potato flop, moron, flop their body at the, the force plate and kick it as hard as they can. Do you honestly think it's going to be equal or less force to the weaker guy? Do you really think it's not going to hit it harder? If you really think that, you're delusional, okay? Same thing if they're skilled kickers and it's a highly proficient skill kick. That's, that's what I've been trying to tell people. And let's come over to the point. People keep talking about powerlifting. They seem to have this idea of how powerlifters train. And they say, well, that's not without a play. Guys, all right, look at how I train. Now we can make that about me. Look at how I train because I don't train in a way that's special or unique, right? Hopefully people get that. My training is not unique. I didn't invent it. 
the system I use is used to train everyone from power lifters to NFL players to martial artists to boxers. At pretty high levels, this same system of training is used to train all these different athletes. It's not my system. Therefore, you can't say, well, this is blah, because you can take me out of it. But that system itself is used for them. There are templates specific to MMA fighters. In that template, there are specific templates of that system for them, written, and it works. Okay. People are over here thinking, oh, well, everyone gets to a big squat because they do nothing but big squatting and just that won't carry over. But it's you don't develop on that system of training, you don't develop a big squat because you squat heavy all the time. That's not how you get there. You get the big squat because you have built a massive amount of explosiveness and power and conditioning and general physical preparedness. And that's what I've been over here trying to promote to people. Dynamic work, speed work, weighted plyometrics, metabolic conditioning right these are the hallmarks this is this is what i promote this is a training style that i promote and people keep getting in their heads they're thinking oh just doing heavy power lifting that's not even what i'm promoting that's not even what i do and that's not what i have my clients do okay this is, work. This is the athletic training that same training that we're discussing that can be used for mma fighters also makes power lifters strong Okay, it makes everybody strong and explosive. And you have people coming in saying this silly stuff. Well, muscle just slows down fighters. Really? Okay, if you train like a bodybuilder and you use copious amounts of anabolics, maybe so. Okay? It is impossible. It is biologically impossible for someone who is already athletic to lift weights and do enough weight lifting to put bulky muscles on that's going to slow them down. Okay, it cannot be done without drugs. Usually it's heavy drugs combined with goofy bodybuilding training. All right, that's what might be causing that effect you're thinking of. You can't do it outside of that context. You can't put enough muscle on to slow yourself down. And in fact, all the dynamic work and everything and compensatory acceleration will make you faster. I mean, case in point, people use this argument and you look over and say, well... I don't know, I can think of someone who was pretty bulky and famous, Mike Tyson. Did Mike Tyson getting really jacked make him slow? Does anyone remember, I mean, you guys remember that guy? Pretty famous, I, I think. Maybe, maybe I'm from a different generation, so a lot of people haven't heard of Mike Tyson. When I was growing up as a kid, Mike Tyson was the shiznit, okay? Everybody knew who he was, and he was known as a legitimate bad dude. Right? Everybody knew that. My whole generation did. We grew up saying, man, that dude, I don't want to fight that guy. And we saw him on TV. We saw that guy just knocking people out. He was jacked. Why wasn't he muscle bound and slow? Okay, using this theory that everyone has, because that dude was jacked and stacked. And he was fast. Dude was real fast. Where, where does your muscle bound theory fall into that? Ludicrous. And fighting sports have weight classes for a reason. If all these people who bring all this back up, if your guys' theory was true, then we should just remove all weight classes from all fighting sports. I don't care whether it's mixed martial arts, BJJ, kickboxing, doesn't matter. Take all the weight classes out there. Remove them. Remove them because size and strength don't matter. That's what you guys are saying. Therefore, there's no reason to have weight classes. Let the 140-pound guys go up against the 220s because they'll just outskill them, right? They're lighter and faster, so they're just going to outskill these 220-pound, slow, muscle-bound freaks, right? That's what you're saying. Remove the weight classes then. Let's see how many of these 140-pound guys, 150-pound guys ever win another title the rest of their life when you do that. Let's see how many of them do it. You know, put your theory into practice and force these federations to remove weight classes. If you really believe that, that's what you would say. You would encourage whoever these guys are, these lighter weight guys, you would encourage them to go fight the heavyweight guys in the same sport at the top levels. You would encourage them to do that and prove it. But that's not reality. They wouldn't. They would lose. 
And again, people coming up with this idea that because people train heavy that they lose stamina and they get gassed out easy. Really, you guys have never heard of conditioning work? And we're not talking about someone who gains 70 pounds of muscle doing bodybuilding training and using copious amount of anabolics. We're talking about people who actually use real training and conditioning work while building their muscle. You don't run out of gas. Right? It's not going to happen. Just like with everyone else, you have to do actual conditioning work. If you have to do conditioning work and you're conditioned, you don't run out of gas real easy. All right? Again, myths. Myths versus reality. Uh, and people just get ludicrous with this stuff. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.